Kamen Rider X8, episode 18. So I guess the intro is just gone and lost forever now. Yeah, it's just getting real. Rest in peace. Uh, Look, man, Laser's gonna come back from the dead and he'll bring the intro. Yeah, yeah once, once Dan is defeated forever, Dangerous Zombie will just become Kyria. And he will bring the theme song back with him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what happened? You know what happened? We're gonna get Deno. We're gonna write that <laughs> race history. That <laughs> yeah, yeah. When Kyria just disappeared, he didn't die. Deno just swiped him up. Yeah, we're gonna fix this mistake in the movie. Once that happens, the intro's gonna come back. So, we open up with Emu, Hero, and Poppy on the hospital roof. Uh, Emu wants to know why Gem asked if his body made him protect the Bugster. Uh, he believes that Hero, ha- Hero knows something, uh, but Hero is still afraid to tell him because he's afraid it'll cause him stress. So, this is a good moment because this shows that Emu is finally catching on to something happening that he isn't aware of. And Poppy is in the same boat as him in that she knows as much as Emu does. So Hiro is really the one being put on the spot here. Uh, Burden of proof's on him. Uh, so I'm. anything you have to say about that, Vashi? Um, my only thing is, with, with everything involved in all this, you'd think em, Emma would be able to piece a little bit more of this together. I mean, I mean everything... Yeah, it, it, it is. It seems to be... For me, it seems to be a little bit too much, to the point where he he already knows that hen, that transforming into Mighty Brothers is messing with him, and he knows he he knows the Bugster virus is a thing that, that exists. And then with the play on with what Genom said, it it shouldn't have been that far of a leap for him to figure it out. See, I'm thinking it's more of like a a Fies, uh Mari thing. Where it's like, yeah, they should be able to figure out that they're, you know, they have Orphanac. DNA, or they were tested for it and stuff, but like because they've been so like vehemently fighting these guys, like to consider yourself like one of the enemy is just so far removed from their mind. Yeah, like they don't even like they know they c- it could be a possibility, but they just don't want to accept it so hard that they're not even gonna. Yeah, because whenever somebody gets close to bringing it up, and even when it eventually is brought up, the memories flood back to Emu. So it's like he's in denial. Decade, did you have anything to say? Uh, I just kind of like that they're bringing back the whole uh kind of conflicting inner turmoil of secrets that we kind of had with uh, Kiria, and now Hiro is pretty much in that position. But yeah, that's about it. Uh, all right then. Um, meanwhile, Sukuru, uh, the guy that made Juju Burger and Burgermon, is stressed about making a game that'll save the company. Uh, also, he's handling Burgermon's death by e- eating burgers in his memory. Beautiful. Um, Poignant. Dan shows up and compliments Sukuru for completing a gash at. Uh, when Sukuru starts to question Dan, uh, Dan pulls out his buggle driver and infects Sukuru with the bug virus again. Uh, he then proceeds to so- tell Sukuru that he'll never be able to make AAA, a triple-A title, uh, and it's worth noting that uh, Dan specifically calls Sukuru a human in this scene. Uh, so this is our first look at Dan thinking that he is above everyone else. Something uh, that kind of confuses me about that is um, you, you'd think that, you know, um, he died, or at least almost died when his health bar was depleted, but he circumvented it with the dangerous zombie Gashot. So maybe he is more than human now. Maybe. Uh, it's possible that he, in a way, he could actually be a zombie. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like maybe his world view got kind of you know recertified that like you know even death couldn't kill him. He got a chance to teach himself. Plus, 
his whole like super ego thing was like you know i made the gas shots and everything that's basically what this whole episode's about is his ego of like you know he's so much above anybody else the buggle driver's call is also um buggle up so maybe he's actually like turning himself partly into a bugster yeah Any thoughts, Bashy? I mean, it makes it, the the whole him turning into quote unquote a zombie, and with his ego, it would it makes sense that he jumps to the "I'm God" for lack of a better term with the whole game master thing. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel like his life at this point might be still, and it's pretty much connected to the gash. Like if. I don't know if gashets are indestructible or not. I'm sure they aren't. But I'm pretty sure if that thing gets destroyed, because, I mean, he did put death data into it or whatever. It is pretty strange, but I think if the gashet's destroyed, then he'll probably be done for. Uh, That's an interesting theory that, like, maybe to defeat him, you have to destroy a dangerous zombie. Yeah, because he's kind of like a bugster attached to that gashet. I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. Just on the say zero. That's an interesting take. Like fight the head shield device, not the rider. It, it's made of like space plastic. That that material in all Toku that looks like it's plastic, but is actually you know capable of withstanding combat. Yep. <laughs> space plastic. That's that's the first I've heard of that. <laughs> actually, uh, no. See, in Gundam, there's a thing. Uh, Gundams are made of Gundanium, which is lunar titanium, and you're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> um, of course. Um, um, actually, it makes sense, uh, because what it is, is titanium made on, on the moon, and you're like, what the fuck, why is that stronger, right? Um, it's mostly because, like, if you make something on the moon, because the moon doesn't have an active uh, core, when it's settling back down, it's gonna all orient down because of gravity is the only force affecting its molecules so it won't have micro factors um which makes it stronger so it's basically just titanium that's stronger but the problem with that is you crashing titanium through freaking you know like atmosphere and shit titanium seems cool and strong but like you gotta remember like the you know the blackbird you know expands quite a bit even though it's made out of titanium, so, you know, when it's sitting on the freaking <laughs> runway ready to launch, it's leaking a lot of fuel because it's meant to expand when it's in its actual flight orbit to, you know, close up the gaps. And Gundam CIA plane, and Gundam history, <laughs> and Kamen Rider podcast. Getting uh, the full story here. Okay. Back to the hospital roof. Uh, and we want to know what everyone is hiding from him. Uh, what is the compatibility surgery? Why doesn't he need it? Puppy says it's because he's a genius gamer because she doesn't know the truth yet. Uh, why was he able to create a gash at? Uh, and more, most importantly, why did Hero and Taiga attack him? Uh, Hero dodges the questions and simply demands Emu's gash ats, but they're interrupted by a bugster call, and Emu refuses to give Hero his gash ats. Um, yeah, so Emu's refused to hand over his gash ats before, but this time he's showing a lot more backbone to it. Uh, it's interesting to note that uh, Hero is just... He is unable to think of a lie here. He's just avoiding the question because he doesn't have an answer that he thinks he can say. I don't know. I think Hero kind of has a tendency to start off by being disrespectful because he shut people out so often and been just like, well, I'm the genius surgeon. You have to listen to me. And now that's not working for him. And if he was at least a little bit more polite or had better bedside manner, which has always been my complaint with heroes as bedside manner is terrible, then maybe he could have at least borrowed one gosh shot and things would have probably wound up better for everyone for it. Okay, well, he's a surgeon, so, you know, they're not <laughs> usually bedside manner type people. Um, and the other thing is this might be a subbing difference. 
like in ours it's it's pretty okay but yeah like i can see how you know he's being a kind of a hard ass up to this point would kind of be a detriment to him but like for me it just seems just red like you know he's not here yet he can't he can fake it you know for emmy to trust him and give him a dash out here anything Zashi or decade uh not on this moment no okay uh so after Emu and Puppy leave, uh, Hero confirms to the audience that he and Taiga were trying to perform a bug soul removal operation on Emu when they attacked him, and that he believes that if he had his gashets, he could cure Emu. Uh, it, I said this in a previous podcast that I believe that they were trying to do a bug soul removal operation. I was right. Yeah, pretty good point. I mean, like, it's interesting how much this arc has made, like, Hero and Taiga care just about Emu. You know, these guys just all about themselves. Like, when it really comes down to it, after what happened to Kyria, I think they're just like, yeah, we can't let this happen ever again. Yeah, especially uh, since it is a life on the line. Uh, Kyria's death probably hit them a little hard in that regard. Yeah, like a fellow doctor, too, right? Yeah. Uh, anything from anyone else? Nope. Nope. Alright. Emu and Poppy show up to find Sukuru and Dan, with Taiga and Nico shortly behind. Uh, Dan reveals he infected Sukuru as bait. Dan transforms with Dangerous Zombie, Taiga with Bang Bang Shooting, and then Drago Knight Hunter Z solo, uh, and Emu uses Mighty Brothers Double X in duo mode. Uh... I find that Dan did decently well in a three against one, but once he's overwhelmed, he uh, taunts Sukuru by saying that he'd only make garbage games even without having game syndrome. And Sukuru's uh, stress builds up in motors from Kiria's introduction returns. Well, he was the last one, right? Left of the reusable ones. I never thought that I was going to see an old bugster come back like that. It's, it's almost like um, how some hackers have um, a, a, a their own folder or archive of computer viruses that they can launch at any moment. It's like, does Dan have copies of bug, of the bugsters? Or is Parad um, making copies of the other bugsters or something? Uh, see, I think he's... The Bugsters are born from the game, so he probably just has copies of the original Gashats that created them, right? Yeah. He does have the proto Gashats. Yeah, oh, that's true. I mean, plus, uh, later on, something happens in this episode of, like, you know, I created AI. AI is just basically programming, which, you know, <laughs> kind of reveals something about another character, but, like, maybe that's why he doesn't care about anything. It's like, what does it matter? I can replace any of you. You know? As long as it suits my plans. Yeah. Also, Dan's a fucking asshole. Like... <laughs> yeah, I didn't say it out loud, but in my notes I wrote, I called him an asshat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's completely gone off the deep end at this point. Like, I've been kind of wondering, like, maybe there is some sort of at least motivation i can sympathize with behind dan and nope he's just a nutter no no it's just an ego trip like he's not crazy it's just his he's just finally just letting it yeah ego. this episode is the biggest ego trip for him this is just the start of it pretty much like it's like i, I think after he got zombie it's just gotten worse because, like, he hasn't really lost since he got that damn thing. And also, even before mm. he got Zombie, um, he seemed like he had this almost perverse thrill from uh, how tough the fights with x um in his original form was. Yeah, I think it's more just like him seeing, like, oh, look how great my invention is. Yeah, he's kind of seeing Kamen Rider Chronicle finally uh, play out, because everybody's fighting and he's and he's controlling everybody everybody is a part of his plan and nobody really knows the full truth yeah you know what this reminds me of um who was the rhino writer from guy Kiki? yeah guy 
basically, this is just another version of Guy, except he made the main villain. And Guy was just, like, he was, like, say, he was about the game, he was into sadistic stuff. Dan is taking this to a whole new level. Yeah, Dan's actually, see, the thing is, like, Guy was too overconfident because he was a spoiled brat. Actually, Dan probably started off like that. Except he was smart enough not to fuck himself over. Imagine what would have happened if Guy was immortal, though. Yeah, now, basically, right? Like, nothing would stop him either. I mean, the only reason he, he kind of got messed up is because uh, OJ showed up. and Well, he's showing up in this show, too, but I don't think he's going to have anything to do with Dan. It, that's just going to be a side story. Yeah, it's his and the Brave side story. Man, this show has so many side stories. It's ridiculous. Really... There's so many characters to talk about, like because there's the there's all the characters in X Eight, and then there's the comparisons you can make to Gaiman and Ryuki, which also have a lot of characters. These discussions can get pretty complex. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, so you took the you know what they did? They took Ryoma and they combined it with Guy. This oh, is uh, yeah. one reason why I'm enjoying this show a lot. Is just. Thinking about it and like comparing it to other writers. Yeah, see, it's one of those things where like normally I don't like when they do like the, oh let's all sit and freaking discuss the mystery because it doesn't mean anything. They they'll just pull whatever they want out of their ass at the end. Like a lot of Garms ones where like there was a lot of discussion, but I didn't think like any of it made sense because it's like okay you got this theory and you got this theory and it's like okay the only reason your theory fit, bro, is because. Just by fluke, you came on to the right theory. But like this show, this show is a lot more like, okay, everything you can discuss actually has valid points. I think that most of the fun for me in any uh, Toku series comes from if they can just mix up the whatever formula they're going with enough for me to wonder, um, well, wait, what's what's going to happen next? To try to actually have characters that make enough sense where you can speculate as to what their motives are, are 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 and what they're going to do because of it. Yeah. I mean, that's good. Uh, the only downside is, like, when they play that up too much, the whole mystery box thing, where it's like, oh, look, let's just solve the mystery. Yeah. What's... Too many red herrings is bad. Oh, it's so terrible. Um, and the other thing is, like, when, uh, like... Writers can just do anything. That gets really annoying too. I heard that um, Black RX was the big offender of that because he just would make up powers. I haven't seen RX. I've seen Black and yeah, same. That's I. So I can't talk much about a series. But I that still I hear think, yeah. good things about Black RX. Like I, a lot of people still like it. So maybe it's he made it work. Thing. Yeah. Okay, so when we last left off, Motors uh, gets on his bike and starts the race. Emu uh, goes from duo mode to solo mode. Uh, interestingly enough, it still says level up. Um, he grabs a nearby speed upgrade and starts chasing after Motors, completely forgetting that he has Boxo bike. <laughs> yeah, that was stupid. Yeah. Well, but at least one of them damn items got used by somebody other than per Paradox. The, the show kind of forced them to... I think they just wanted to force that in there just so that we could see x doing the fast-running thing again. You know what? At least he tried. Yeah, except then he why didn't he just switch to the bike once he figured out he couldn't keep up? Wait, it probably takes a lot no, on the bike. no, no, no. no. <laughs> All he would have to do is summon the bike, because he already proved he can just do that. I thought he could only do that as, like, a level 3. I thought he could only do that while he was in level 2, though. Well, mm. no. He puts it in the uh, critical strike slot and summons the bike. Okay, why didn't he just go split up, one have the super speed one, and the other one get on the bike? Uh, because the Mighty Brothers Deluxe Gash at uh, yeah. uses a boat slot. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Dan uh, is pleased with himself for using, specifically using motors to distract Emu while he fights Taiga alone. Uh, so, he actually specifically planted that bugster. Uh, Emu, chasing motors, realizes that motors is faster than he was before and loses track of him. Uh, Taiga unleashes Dragon Knight critical strike against Dan, who parries half of them, 
uh, half of the shots, but stands up fine from the hits he does take. And even Nico calls it bullshit. I, I just love that uh, it, the, the, these fights against Dangerous Zombie keep feeling like raid bosses. They have to be like, okay, what are like all the strongest shots we have between us, and how can we use all of them? Dragonite Hunter, use the entire thing yourself? Sure, if it means we stand a chance against Dangerous Zombie. Yeah, it's good that they're bringing the whole arsenal. I just wish they'd use it a little bit better, but like... At this point, like, anything that hits Dangerous Zombie does no damage. I mean, he looks like a freaking weirdo when he gets up, though. But... Taga is 2 for 2 on using uh, Dragonite, while Emu ha- was the one that had trouble with it. So maybe uh, Emu just isn't the genius gamer we thought he was. Uh, it might just be, you know, Ryder. Maybe his mind's just moving a mile a minute and you need, like, cold logic to calm it down. I mean, it's, all, it's even a thing in, like, video game, in, like, per- that you'll encounter when you, you play or aspire to play games on the professional level. If something's eating away at you, it makes you play on tilt. Basically, it lets you play when your frustration could get the better of you. Uh, I've got nothing. I'm still trying to figure out why he still didn't summon the bike. Because <laughs> literally, he, he, he flat out... <laughs> Even when he lost track of him, you know, you know, realized he was too sh- too slow. He's wh- why he didn't he go. Oh yeah, around, I have a bike. He walks he just, away. He, yeah, he just walks away. He's like, eh, I'll deal with him later. You know what happened? Freaking DN stole it. You know what? Yeah. Stole the treasure. Yep. Honore, I, I'd be okay with this. Or well, he's he has the pass to the train. You know that mug. Yeah. So DN stole. Okay, so DN stole Baxel bike. Gave it to. Deno, and now they're going back in time to save Kira. But they already have Den Bird. I want that to be a movie so badly. <laughs> let's just make it ourselves, you know, just get the clips together. Wait, let's just buy, we could just buy, like, suits from, um, Aniki or something. So one of us has to have a, a decent camera between all of us. I have a camera. Yeah, too much work. <laughs> okay. Too much um, work. No, I just meant we just splice, we just... <laughs> We just splice uh, uh, episode yellow and something from Kyria. Yeah, just a episode poorly yellow edited episode Kyria. yellow. Um, Dan uses Giri Giri critical strike to KO Taiga and takes his gash at, uh, proclaiming that now only he only has to take out X Aid. Taiga questions if he can beat X Aid, uh, but he comments that it'll be easy enough to make a new game strong enough. Uh, Taiga asks, what the hell are you trying to create this time? I thought that was an interesting line there. Uh, Emu shows up as Dan leaves to find Taiga at his gash it's stolen. He proceeds to have another migraine from his transformations. Thoughts? I, I just like seeing the um, bug virus when it's... Uh... When it manifests itself as a visible ailment, that I just think it makes an interesting point of drama for the series. You mean the orange blob? Okay, well, uh, I don't like the orange blob CGI creature so much, but like the fact that Emu is getting headaches, you know, that there's a physical ailment to go along with it that's uh, noticeable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I mean, like, it's better than the, oh shit, I fell down for a second and now I'm apparently a sprinter with anxiety issues, I guess. Yeah, like, they, uh, I, I've been seeing the uh, viruses manifest themselves in um, major ways like that, uh, more towards this more recent part of the show. Before a lot of the time, it was just like, oops, I glitched out and fell over, I have game sickness. But then, like, when in that one episode earlier, when they dropped that, like, there was also the complications of working around uh, the cancer on top of it, I was just like, okay, now we're getting into these serious medical drama plots. No, we're not. That was just a one-time thing. Well, yeah, but still, it was a nice change of pace. At least we streamlined the what's-your-stress thing. I'm like, man, I wish to do something better, but I guess we're just substituting what's causing you to despair to what the hell's causing you to stress out. You, I mean, you'd be surprised how many people actually don't understand how much stress can, like, make them ill. So, I mean, I think it's a good thing to include in this series, keeping in mind that there are 
children that are supposed to find this, like, to some extent, educational. You're supposed to learn a lesson from it. Fair enough, I guess. Yeah, especially in Japan, yeah. That's kind of workaholic culture. Yeah, that's really real there now that I think about it. Okay, now we're back at CR. Emu uh, questions Sukuro about his stress. Uh, Sukuro explains that there's a new CEO. Uh, we don't really get a good look at him. It's, uh, but he uh, basically started an internal competition to create a game to save the company. Sukuro isn't really confident in himself, but a group of his co-workers think that he can do it and they want to help him. So this kind of gives him a bit of a confidence booster, but it might just be like make, giving him a sense of responsibility instead. Uh, anything about that? I mean, it's interesting that we're seeing his team. So maybe we're going to see more of Sakura and like the team working together with CR now. Because they at least they look like they have a sec now, so maybe. I mean, I hope that's what happens instead of just like, oh yeah, all this great story, yeah, let's scan that for more Dan nonsense. Well, I actually, it's funny because I actually had something on that uh, very matter. Um, I was watching <laughs> RTA subs, and to be fair, I kind of also had my eye on the chat at the same time. But I thought that the way that it was phrased and the fact that you didn't see Dan in the crowd insinuated that, like, Dan was a more recent CEO and there was somebody else before him. And then when it changed management to over to Dan, that things got, uh, that, that, that things became different. I mean, Dan has that relative that's in prison for one thing. Yeah, it's his dad who was the former CEO. Um, meanwhile, Poppy, uh, Thinks that they are in a poopy popa pinch. Um, Taiga calls in and confirms that Emu isn't in the room before speaking. Uh, he wants Hiro to keep Emu from fighting Dan for two reasons. One, Dan is making a stronger gash at, and they can't risk Emu getting his stolen. Uh, two, Emu is approaching his limit on transforming and shouldn't transform anymore. And then Nico steals Taiga's line about taking the gashets themselves. Uh, Poppy figures out that Emu has game syndrome and wants to tell him, but Hiro explains that if he finds out, the stress could cause him to disappear. This is a uh, really good uh, scene here. It really emphasizes the importance that everyone feels for the situation and how much they want to protect Emu from this. Uh, yeah, what do you guys like, think? Wow, way for everyone to be a bro. It's just that um, at the same time, I I, I wonder. Um, I, I just really wonder what Emma's going to think about um, his own game sickness now that there's no way that he doesn't know. Um, I mean, he seems like he's kind of trying to figure out uh, his own identity amidst all this. Like he can't, he doesn't understand what everybody else's motivation is, and he's just like, what "The hell with you! I'm going to go with my own motivation then." But yeah, that's all uh, I have to say on that so far. One thing that I thought was kind of funny, <laughs> just kind of backtracking, when uh, Nico started hitting Taiga, I thought, I just think their relationship's so damn funny, because uh, earlier when he got defeated by Gen, she like runs up to him and's all rubbing his shoulders and stuff, making sure he's okay. And then he brings up X Aid and she just starts hitting him. I thought that was pretty <laughs> funny. Uh, the salt is real with Nico. So, Decade, uh, you seem to have cut out when we were talking about uh, the new CEO. Yeah. Did you have anything you wanted to say on that? Uh, other than the fact that I think it's probably Dan's dad, then no. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you have anything to say about Dan's dad? Uh, no. I'm still waiting to see how that unfolds. Clearly it was important or they wouldn't have brought it up back then. Alright. Uh, so, cut to Dan finishing making upgraded versions of Tattle Quest and Bang Bang Shooting uh, to fight Emma with. 
uh, he explains to Parado that the idea behind Common Rider Chronicle is to turn ordinary citizens into common riders so they can fight to the death. He's basically trying to recreate uh, Ryuki. Yeah, he's Shiro um, Kanzaki. Except Kanzaki Shiro ended up having way better motiva uh, yeah, motivation. True. That took a lot to figure that out. Well, I figured um, this. I I assumed this is what it was going to be, but now it's absolutely out in the open. So, uh, Parado argues that he'll defeat Emu, uh, but Dan says that he can't wait any longer. The two get into a short argument, wherein Dan starts going off on a tangent about other people than him making gash outs, and that only he should be able to do it. Uh. His superiority complex is really coming on this scene. Uh, he then goes into a, a thing about uh, Parado and all other Bugsters just being game pieces he created and dictated their what their actions would be and starts comparing himself to God. Like, he really gets a, a little off subject here. He's really just letting some stuff out. He's getting kind of scary. Definitely unstable. This is one of the reasons that I like one of the reasons that I like Dan as a villain because I mean yeah, on the surface he's totally uh has a god complex, but he's also kind of revealing that he's pretty insecure when it comes to other people making gashets or improving gashets because he he's afraid that someone could use his technology and surpass him. So on one hand, he's like, oh, I'm the best. But he's like, uh, no one else can use it now. You've gone too far. With why, Mighty why, Brothers. why, why, Well, yeah, it's just the same thing as, like, I'm the most brilliant thing. Like, you can't allow anybody to surpass him. Oof, it's so stupid. But it does prove that one thing is, like, yeah, Parado isn't human. He's just an AI, just like Poppy. Yeah, he's another bugster. Everyone was suspicious of this for a while now, but this is the first time it's actually been said. Uh, anything else on that before I move on? I'm still curious as to his origins, though. Same. I it's I think that there's going to be a, a lot more focus on Parad right now. He might even be one of the characters that winds up... Um, I don't see him ever completely switching sides, but I see him becoming a more sympathetic character that they can uh, join in the fight against Genmu um, because uh, he he's, he's showing some very um, unique motivations because he's a non-human character who is a main character who, who fights, and he has, because he's a completely different species, almost, his brain works a totally different way. His motivations are very different and just on top of that uh don's acting was really beautiful like i think his his acting really got the insanity across just seeing someone break like that on on screen and do it so well is just beautiful to me yeah i mean he's basically the new heart i mean paradise but um I don't think Dan's broken. I think it's just like he's not giving a shit about hiding who he is. And so he's kind of like doing a victory lap, basically. But he is disturbed. Like, you could, I think he is kind of mentally coming unhinged. Yeah. No. It's, okay. Uh, this is one of those things where, like, language is weird. Um, like, for me, unhinged would be like, okay, he's going to fuck up. But, like, I don't think he's stupid enough to screw up. Like, he's still got all his past. It's it's one of those things where it's like, he's just a sociopath, he's enjoying it too much, so he's tipping his hand. I, I, to me, unhinged means just that it's, um, it doesn't mean that you're gonna fuck up, but it means that you're, um, behaving, um, more er erratically. That there's, that you're just kind of slipping further more into a complex. Yeah, I guess that's, uh, so I guess we're both right, just we just mean different things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Motors attack Sukuru's co-workers to cause him stress. Um, Emu gets ready to head out to face Motors, but Hiro cuts him off to demand his gashet so he can perform the operation. When Emu refuses, 
Versus Hero presses him against a wall and demands he stay on standby. Uh, Emu asks if it has anything to do with what Hero is hiding from him. Uh, then forces his way out of Hero's hold and says that he wants to bring back Sakura's smile and that he can't trust the patient to someone who doesn't care about their personal affairs. Hero comments that he only cares about curing the patient in front of him, uh, which Emu interprets as referring to the figurative patient in front of him when it's a more subtle uh, reference to Emu. Hero had a very picked a very bad choice of words when he was put on the spot, though. It was very effective, though, because he got his point, both points out there, and he the one that Emu picked up on was the only one that he wanted it to, while yeah. like giving us audience a little nod to like he really cares here. That's true. Yeah, that's one of those great scenes where you're seeing like the good side and the bad side of both characters where it's like Fear's a little headstrong and secretive and like Emu's a little more like you know rush out there kind of guy but like that's not the best choice in this situation so it's kind of showing like you know like Hero cares, Emu cares, they're you know same feelings just different characters just conflicting, conflicting pretty hard. Um. Yeah, man, that was a great scene. It's like I, I, I like the fact that it, it tied into like the the actual characters' mentalities on everything with the personalities that we've been given. With Hero being seen as this guy who only literally cares about doing his job and doesn't really seem to care for the patients themselves, besides just literally doing his job. So when he drops the line of you know, only caring about the patient in front of him because that's the only way that he's interacted with Emu and everybody else. It makes sense that that's the way Emu took it as, you know, the figurative patient rather than himself. Yeah, good point. Becky, do you got something? Uh, just a great use of dramatic irony. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Could, couldn't have summed it up better myself. So, Emu shows up to fight Motors using Shakariki Sports. I thought we had seen the last of that, so there's a surprise. Looks looks uh, better on X8 anyways. Yeah. Dan shows up uh, and tells Motors he did a good job being bait, and Motors is confused by that statement, and Parado is unamused. Yep, that, that's what I'm uh, talking about with those good character motivations for Parade. Uh, Poppy, Hero, Taiga, and Nico all show up. Taiga's mad that Hero didn't stop Emu from coming out here and transforming. Nico tries acting tough towards Dan and ends up backing down like a total coward. You want to deal with that guy? <laughs> uh, stage select into like this open dirt field in front of a mountain. Dan reveals uh, one of the new level 50 gashats that he made. Tattle Fantasy, a game where the player is an evil king who fights the hero to conquer the world. Dude, that sounds freaking awesome. Yeah? I would still play that game. It's so thematically appropriate for this situation. Right? The other thing is that, like, um, one thing that's constantly a theme in Final Fantasy games is the idea that you can encounter a boss who's so much more powerful than you expected if it's like a hidden boss or it's a boss that they expect you to grind for. There are so many enemy one-hit kill attacks that are way higher level than anything you'd encountered leading up to it throughout all the Final Fantasy games. And that's exactly the role that Tattle Fantasy serves in this case. Yeah, I couldn't have said that better than myself. Thank you. Dan summons the uh, little gamer for Tattle Fantasy to fight Emu for him. Uh, why he didn't transform with it? I don't know. Suspense. Uh, Emu tries using Mighty Brothers Double X, but gets taken out in one hit anyways. Yeah, I mean, two things. What like, we've never seen Dan put on armor on his suit, so, like, well, there's... One, that he can't, and two, that 
it's not going to look good on the suit, so that's probably why. And the other thing is, it could just be, you know, Dan's ego. It's like, why would I even bother? You're so under level. Like, why am I one blast to just beat you? You know, it's just proving his point to uh, Taiga, where it's like, you know, I could just build a game to beat Emu. Yeah, uh, story wise, that's probably the explanation, but production wise, they probably just didn't want to make the suit. Yeah, they they might. Um, I, I mean, if they're suggesting the hero might, uh, at some point use that gashot, um, or that somebody else will, I would presume if it was gonna wind up being anyone else who would be hero. But maybe there's a suit that looks like a good upgrade of. Um, maybe there's gonna be a suit that looks like an upgrade of, uh, Brave, and the Tattle Fantasy armor is meant to look better on that than Genmu, Dangerous Zombie. Yeah, I I think like this Braves using this next episode and then like he has one more form I think or maybe that's a movie exclusive or something. Um, Motors interrupts by uh, asking Dan why he was called Bait, and Dan responds by killing him with Dangerous Zombie because Motors is no longer needed. Uh, Murdered Dan then, and... yeah. Dan uh, proceeds to tell Emu that riders and bugsters are just game pieces to be disposed of when their job is done. What are you, white wizard now? Vashi, you got anything? Um, I, I do like the way that this, this all set up with everything. Um, and I do like the fact that when Dan used uh, Tattle Fantasy, that he his mentality was, yeah, you guys are so weak, the Avatar can kill you. Ra- 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 rather than just putting it on, I mean, it makes sense with the way that they've really done all the other shots that they've pretty much been one suit only, except for, I think it was um, Shockery Sports was the only one, uh, excluding uh, Dragon Hunter. That they- They've all been made specifically for one suit. But there's like a figure line, and... Uh, you know, things might be different on the production level, but they made really effective, properly scaled toys where you can switch the level 3 armor between all the different Kamen Rider base level 2 figures. And I would think that that'd be possible on the larger scale show suits, too, if it's possible on the toy. I think they're just doing the Gaim thing where, like, the toys, you can just switch them, but in the shows, you're never really going to see that. I just wish you. I just wish I would see it because I think it. Sh- there's no reason it shouldn't be possible. Yeah, I. It would have been cool to see like Hero just punch it into X Aid, just to see him. What would he do with that power set, right? Because he can't cut anything. I was really hoping that yeah. Emma would give him the uh, mighty max, mighty action X Gash at the beginning because he yeah. still had mighty brothers. <laughs> It's just like, yeah, you can have this game. I already beat it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Here, take Shakariki Sports, too. <laughs> yeah, go hang out with Beast. I gave, I, gave that, I gave that game a 2 out of 10, man. Shakariki Sports sucks. You can have it. <laughs> We're going to sell it to GameStop anyways. <laughs> I just imagine Emma trying to pawn off the cash ass. <laughs> I think they want to make like a video of me attempting to turn in a cachet to GameStop just as a prank. Yes. I'll wear my lab coat. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, Wait, Decker, do you got anything on this? Um, An alternative title for this episode could be Genom Cures a Patient. <laughs> It, it would need to be in those, like, it's always sunny in Philadelphia, like, quotation marks, though. Oh, yeah. Alright. Um, Parado saves Emu uh, uh, from Dan by decking Dan in the face with Knockout Fighter. Oh, yeah. You see, now, you can see, now Parado's something to fight for. Uh, Parado has had enough of Dan's shit particularly his attitude towards Bugsters. Uh, Dan calls him a hypocrite for defeating Revel like a few episodes ago, but Prado explains that they were playing a game and that they were on opposite teams. 
of course they were going to fight. Those were the rules. But implying that Dan is just killing Bugsters for no reason. Uh, Prado proceeds to beat the shit out of Dan, and it's really sick. He wrecked Dan. He's so uh, OP. Can we actually get to see level 50 in full force? Uh, he switches to perfect puzzle and says, Die Henshin. Yeah. That, that, that's the first time he's done that, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I it it is. He does, in, it's like he's saying x thing. It's It's great. Because uh, I always thought uh, X-Aid was just being combined. a dork and making those up. He, well, he was, but now, well, it could just be that, like, Parado is copying him in this instance. Okay, see, I thought he said it the first time when he hands him, when he switches, but I, I might just be misremembering. Also, like, die hands just means big transformation. It, it could be that, like, I just don't remember him, but in this moment, it felt really good when he said die henshin. Uh, better than any time Emu has said it ever. <laughs> um, he combines three muscle-up power-ups for his finisher. Uh, while Dan survives, he knows he's been defeated and resorts to scumbag tactics and uh, tells Pardo that as punishment for defying him, he will uh, take away his dream of defeating uh, Emu. The opening theme begins playing in the background. Yeah, apparently it should be called the ending. <laughs> Dan addresses Emu with the questions that he's been asking all along. Hero, Taiga, and Parado realize what he's about to say and try rushing to stop him, but they fail. Dan tells Emu that he's. Parado can teleport. How did he miss? Dan tells Emu that he's patient zero. Uh, Parado grabs Dan by the collar. Emu begins breaking down both mentally and physically. Episode end. Yeah, that was intense. Yeah. See, Dan, uh, uh, Dan's really losing his shit. Like, it just, like you could see how he he may have been having a God Complex moment if, like, Euphoria earlier, yes, but now you can kind of tell that he's switching between these desperate dirtbag tactics and his Euphoria. I think he's just, like, he knows he's lost, so now he's like, if I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. So, if, like, you know, if I can't win, you're not getting in. I hope you die. I hope we win. both die. Well, he knows he's not, Parado's not going to die, but, like, the more important than living to Parado is to fight x and x is going to end up dead. Now. Yeah, it, it removes all of Parade's motivation for fighting. Yeah, Parado has been desperate to fight x -Aid. Um... Emu's breakdown in this scene is really good, especially it's like cool. the effects. Yeah. It just, yeah, it's pretty nice, but it looks just like the, the movie, uh, when he went uh, Double X, right, Mighty Brother. Uh, I haven't seen the movie. Yeah, I well, haven't seen either. The if, the effects are the same, right? It's just except it's gold instead of blue and orange. Again. We haven't seen the movie, so we can't compare. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Oh, either. you it's haven't? In the trailer. It's in the like trailer thing, but whatever. So, I never realized how much I wanted to see Taiga football tackle someone bef before now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, like, it didn't happen. He stopped after Dan said the thing. But I really was just hoping to see Taiga football tackle him. Yeah, that would have been pretty sweet. Uh, I, I'm glad with the way this episode ended, in, in terms of the whole cliffhanger thing. Get a little bit of a, you know, lack, slight lack of, you know, consequence somewhat with the preview for the next episode. I mean, not much, because who's to say how exactly this will play out? But yeah. with seeing him seemingly fine in the the preview, it cuts a little bit of the a little bit of the tension away from the he's disappearing thing. 
Yeah, the uh, preview should have been edited differently. Yeah, but that's like every... Yeah. Japan doesn't care that much about spoilers. <laughs> yeah, like, they're, at least they're not as bad as they used to be in the, um... Gosh, I, I've seen, I was remember watching, like, Die Ranger, and I'm not gonna say what part, because I still want it to, there to be some suspense, but the entire twist of one of the episodes is in the title of the episode, and this happens, like, three times throughout Die Ranger. Uh, so, yeah, though, I, I am glad that they're starting to build more on per um parade because it, it there's still the big question of how he came into existence and my theory on that is it somehow relates to m being patient zero which yeah. would ex it which would explain a little bit of why he's so headstrong on defeating m here's something that's interesting uh hero and taiga uh, we know they knew about Emu's game syndrome, and uh, they didn't want to say anything to him because they were worried about the stress it would cause him. Uh, so when they start charging Dan, it makes sense. But then Parado starts charging as well, and it's like, he also cares this much. For different reasons, but still. Yeah. It was like a real neat attention to detail that's... Like, yeah, he also realizes what's about to go down. He knows what'll happen if Emu finds out. Yeah, that was cool, but it's just like, I'm like, you can teleport, man. <laughs> How could you miss? <laughs> Must have forgot. Yeah, I mean, it could be... So stressed he forgot he could teleport. I mean, that I guess that makes sense. I guess. I mean, like, he could just be tired from transforming. You don't know how it affected Buster compared to a normal... Human, right? Because his driver is different. And like with this, the the only issue I had with this entire episode, because this entire episode was ninety nine point nine nine percent perfect for what it did, was when they all showed up to fight Genom, and Emu told everybody to get back, and nobody moved, and nobody moved. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right? Like, that's my problem with, like, uh, when, like, Asuna and Nico show up. I'm like, do you know there's, like, a million attacks that are going to fly around, right? That, that's yeah. right. Like, so that Nico, at least in her case, and possibly in Poppy's defense as well. Uh, okay, for one, Poppy can kind of defend herself, and Nico's just insane. Yeah, I was going to say, like, why Nico like tried to taking Gam on, basically. Yeah, okay, she doesn't know that much better, but yeah, fair enough. But, like, it's more weird that, like, Taiga and Hiro didn't at least get the hell out of there. Right. And then, like, with, with Poppy, it's like, even through, you, you, you notice it throughout the series, and now looking back at it, like, when Emu tells him to, you know, get the patient away, throughout the fight, he keeps cutting yeah. to her, and she's like, 10 feet away with the patient. <laughs> just standing there. <laughs> it's just, yeah, shot location, you know. You don't really run away far anymore. Shit, even the wizard, man. Like, they got them the hell out of there. Now it's like, ah, oh, it's cool. They're 10 feet away. I'm totally safe. Like, like e even with the whole stage select -like thing, it, I, I think it would have been better if it didn't pull every single person with them. Yeah. Granted, yeah, what they, the hell, Dan? You're a shitty game designer. Well, no, Dan's an asshole. He doesn't care who he kills. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Hence his whole reason for creating the game. <laughs> I want to watch people die. Eh, fair point. I, I I just love giving game designers shit, though. It's it's <laughs> like, they, they take it so personally, and I want to see Dan, like, get super salty. He did. Well, he yeah, I did. Though. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I enjoy seeing that. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like the Dan Dan's whole motivation is, you know what? There's murder in this world. You know what? I want everybody. I want murder to happen. But you're gonna do it on my terms. See, see, yeah, okay. You don't know if he wants just to kill people or if he just wants to strive to survive, or maybe he just wants to run the ultimate game. Pretty much, he wants to become the god of the world. So let's turn everything into a game. So. 
I am God. I don't know to be Kratos now. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Though all I know is he needs a serious, serious by a bunch of mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> How many mirrors can he fit into that little lab of his? Because a- after that got pointed out to me, yeah, that's all I want now is him to go buy mirrors. I don't care what he does for the rest of the series. I just want him to buy mirrors. <laughs> and, collect, and collect children's drawings. He probably already has that. You know, little Emma. Yeah. Like he's gonna go and look for his like old drawings and old games, and it's just gonna be missing. Yeah, and he's you know he gets all the fan art from well, you know his little children fans. He puts them up on the wall. Well, yeah. ex- Emu drew the, like the Mighty Brothers when he was a kid. So we yeah. have that as a Ryuki reference. Jeez, that is, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That is straight up a Ryuki reference. You know, and then with the whole stage select thing, I guess, being kind of alternate dimension, you know, mirror world kind of thing. Yeah, it could be. I mean, then again, we have, like, actual Ryuki actors showing up again. So that's cool. Seriously, though, man. Like, could you imagine Oja versus these chumps? <laughs> I I feel like Hero's going to get his shit wrecked. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And that's just with Oja, let alone all the other... Let me remind uh, everyone that nobody beat Oja. Like, yeah. in the original so script, kind of fire. Knight was supposed to beat him, but it was such a popular character, they changed it so that he didn't. Uh, so... Nobody beat Oja. He was too strong. He. Well, I'm not going to say that because that's a spoiler for the end of Ryuki. Uh, you're already yeah. halfway through that spoiler, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, well, Oja should have, well, well, deserved to win the Rider War. No, no, he didn't. That cheap piece of shit with this triple fusion. <laughs> Sentai monster. Oja for president, 2020. <laughs> well, let's see here. Uh, come. Obuto has never told a lie, uh, can move the speed of light, and walks the path of heaven. Uh, now let's compare that to Hillary and Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and besides, I've never seen Trump throw a writer kick in my life, so I'm going to pick the candidate who can write a kick. You know what? I'm picking Goro-chan. Because oh he man, he's and... so good. Oh, right, he played a villain in Kabuto. Yeah, he was such a cinnamon roll before that. Okay, um, I really enjoyed this episode. Uh, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5, and I look forward to next week. Me too, it's a pretty good episode. I don't know, know. give it like a 4.5, yeah. It's pretty solid, it's just got like a little like, it's just got like, problem that Toei or uh, Tokusatsu writers have is I forget which powers people have, but other than that, it's pretty much perfect. Yeah, I, I, I thought this was this episode was about as good as the series has gotten and everything else is just works out perfectly. It, it's really culminating, yeah. That's pretty much my main opinion on this is that it, it's just everything just got the most real right now, as if it couldn't get more real it got more real, and nothing's going to be the same from this point on. Yeah, I, I'm kind of glad that I was wrong about the gamer Emu being the bugster, because I think the next episode's going to be pretty interesting with Emu just being a total jerk. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm pretty glad how how this whole episode played out, and all the new sides of Parado that we saw. Yeah, I'm psyched. This is Vashi. Thanks for joining. This is Rai. See you next week. Yeah, did it decade. Thanks for listening. I'm Gokai Platinum from Henshin Sunrise. Love to join you guys again. You can see me over on my YouTube channel. Peace. This is Zero signing out. See you guys later. <laughs>